Hi, Evan Lewis here on Evan eScent. And on the last video we talked about how to turn balls with a ball turning attachment on your lathe. And this time we're going to talk about constructing the ball turning attachment without using a milling machine. Conventional ball turners have a miniature compound slide mounted on the top of them. That is, they require a dovetail slot and a uh, fitting part that fits into the dovetail, as well as gib plates, adjusting screws, lead screw and handle, and all of that is quite complex and a lot of machining to make it, and generally requires a milling machine. And to avoid all that, I came up with this alternative design, where the top plate is mounted off-centre, so that when you rotate it, it moves further away from the centre point of the rotation. And that way you can adjust the radius of turning. Sure, it's not as convenient or as easy to use as a proper slider, but it's a heck of a lot easier to make and can be made on a lathe. So you could see in that image uh, the pivot off to one side and uh, the top plate moved a little bit to one side. The design consists of three discs. These are 80 millimeters round and made from a piece of stainless steel I happen to have, a, a solid 80 millimeter bar of stainless, so it uh, looks nice. And in this uh, photograph in the bottom left hand corner is the bottom plate and it's just threaded in the center for mounting the spigot which we'll look at in a minute. And that allows you to mount it in place of the compound slide. You remove the compound slide and mount this in its place and it is held on with this bolt through the center. Now the second disc is on the bottom right and it has a bronze bush in the center of it which does not allow the disc to be clamped tightly when the bolt is screwed up tight. Uh, just enough clearance there to allow it to rotate freely and it has a handle attached to it so that's your main rotating pivot for doing the curve. Mounted on top of that is the third disc which we see at the top and it has a similar mounting with a bronze bush in the center, although it doesn't really have to be that fancy. And this um, allows the top disc to be mounted off center. You can see the hole in the middle disc where it screws on. And uh, so that's for adjusting the radius. Looking at the unit from the underside, we see the spigot. This is an exact copy of the spigot that you find on the underside of the compound slide. So we remove the two grub screws that normally are used for adjusting the position of the compound slide. If you unscrew those at least three or four turns, you don't actually have to take them right out. You can lift the compound slide out and drop this in in its place, do up the grub screws and away you go. So this clamps very tightly. And in the next image we see the bolt that goes through the center and screws into the, uh, into the spigot and it also screws into the bottom plate. So it screws into the bottom plate tightly and then the spigot is tightened from the bottom. Any 10 millimeter bolt could be used but I happen to have this bolt that was designed for going into T-slots on the drill stand and has a fairly wide head. So I used that uh, to give um, broad support uh, over the bronze bush and to prevent it from sticking up too high in the center of the disc I put it in the lathe and turned the top right off it so it's only about two or three millimeters thick. There's a hole drilled in the center and the idea of that was that I could put a pillar or a brass bar in there and it would show us where the center point was for turning but it turns out because of the method that's used we don't really actually need that. Here are the three plates ready for assembly. Actually they've obviously been used because we have three balls that have been made with the device. And you can see here the recesses that these bronze bushes go into. There is a difference between these two bushes. The one on the top allows the top disc to be clamped down and the one on the bottom disc does not. It allows it the center disc to rotate. Here I'm turning the spigot with this angle of 30 degrees. But prior to turning, you can see where I've marked out the reference points. So the um, flat area on the right-hand end of the cone is 2.5 millimeters wide and it's, I've got a little line on each side of that and I need to extend the taper until it reaches that line. On the left hand side of the cone there is another line which is the other margin and it also has about a 2.5 millimeter flat area uh, with the taper in between the two flats. The overall height of this thing is only 14 millimeters. Before parting off 
a hole is drilled through the center of the spigot and tapped for a 10 millimeter bolt and then it's parted off. The three discs were made by cutting off slices with the electric hacksaw, a bit like chopping carrots really. So the carrot slices ended up with a rather a rough surface and they had to be faced off in the lathe and to mount them in the chuck it was necessary to use the alternative set of jaws and this had an added advantage because the plate could be seated against the shoulders of these jaws um, to keep the uh, plate uh, par parallel to the face of the chuck. So one side could be faced and then just flipped over and faced off the other side and it was a uniform thickness right across. Again I'm using the carbide tipped cutting tools and they do a very nice job of turning the stainless steel and I could use a very slow feed rate. You can see I'm using an automatic feed here and that produces a nice finish. I tend to use relatively high cutting speeds with these carbide tips and make relatively shallow cuts and they do well. In this case the shallow cuts are making this thin fluffy swarf and if I let that get under the carbide tool I think it causes uh, little defects on the surface and uh, spoils the finish. So I try to keep the swarf out of the way. Sometimes I use a 3M pot scourer or a Brillo pad, but here I'm using emery paper, 320 and then 1200 grit to polish the surface and then finish it off with the stainless steel reviver powder. I happened to come across this at the supermarket. It's made by Polaris, the people who make pots. After polishing I placed some oil on these discs and put them together to see how well they slid together and was surprised to find that despite the heavy weight of the discs, uh, one disc would hold up the weight of the other disc simply with the vacuum that's created inside the seal. Next I placed the traditional center drill hole and then drilled a hole ready for tapping and although I didn't show it here the tap was placed in the chuck to get it started so that it was very straight in the hole and then it was taken out of the lathe and further tapping was completed by hand. Listen to the sound of the tap. Now you will have heard some crackling noises when I turn the tap backwards and that is chips breaking off and if you don't uh, turn the tap backwards like that and break the chips off they tend to get stuck into the thread and tear chunks of the thread off and really ruin it. Although I was able to screw this bolt into the hole it was rather tight and I wanted it to be a bit freer than that so I decided to try to open the thread a little further. So I had a look at the end tap. Some people call this a blind tap or the number three tap. Now the first tap I used was a number one tap or what I call a taper tap. This sometimes is a little smaller than the blind tap or number three tap. I could hear and feel that this blind tap was cutting. You can see here that it's spinning very freely after having put that tap through depends on the set of taps but particularly with larger tap sets you'll find that, the, that this is the case that this, uh, this uh, third tap opens up the thread a little bit further. Now we're going to bore the recess in the middle disc. This is where the bronze bush and the bolt fit through. The boring tool is uh, useful in this operation. Uh, you can't get an ordinary tool in there because it uh, fouls on the edge of the rim of the recess but this works fine and I'm using it to make the recess as well as the main hole itself. Now I've started turning the bronze bush which is going to go in the recess and trying it in the recess itself and finding that it was a bit tight so I lap it in with some brasso. And once I'm satisfied it's running freely, I part the piece off with a parting tool. And since it's bronze, it's reasonably easy to part off. 
Now the third disc is mounted in a chuck, but this is a four jaw chuck and the jaws on these chucks are reversible and I've reversed three of them and left the first one in normal orientation so that I could fit this in and marked out with crosshairs where I want to fill the hole and recess in the offset position. To set this up for the correct depth, I want to go in at five millimeters. I adjust the compound slide to zero, and then with the big wheel here, I just slide it up till it just touches the surface, and that's then our reference point set up at zero. Lock the carriage. So that zero point should be fixed. And the other thing I need to do is set the radius of this um, circular recess I'm making. So I had a um, crosshair uh, lines marking the center of the circle. So I lined the tool up on that center and then used the cross slide to wind out exactly eight millimeters. And that gives us eight millimeter radius. And so then I've got that marked on the surface there and I can just dig in from that point until I read um, five millimeters depth here. All set to go. It's doing 467 RPM and drawing 2.1 amps and 48 volts showing on the pulse width modulator. Now the next stage is to make the tool post and I'm using the aluminium bronze for this because it's easier to machine than stainless steel. And first I actually make it into a square bar instead of round by facing off the sides in the four jaw chuck. I thought it was fun to show it in slow motion and show some chips flying. Although this is square in uh, cross-section, I plan to make a triangular version as the second version of this tool post so that the carbide tip can be placed directly on the top of the tool post rather than having a tool holder. Because I was using the square tool holder, I had to cut a square slot and decided to get out the milling attachment and break my rule about not using any milling equipment, but uh, I have this uh, very small lightweight vertical slide that allows me to mill a slot for the conventional tool holder. As I say, if I make another one, I'll do it differently and I won't require a slot. Finally, we're ready to put all the pieces together. We've got that uh, turned bolt through the middle, through the bronze bush in the center plate, or middle plate, and screwing into the bottom plate and then the spigot was screwed in to the bottom of that and then the top plate put on with its little bush and we're ready to start turning and making balls and this is the result. There is one more step and that is making the shaft with a thread on the end to screw the ball onto for turning and I decided to make that a separate video coming next uh, but it's basically about uh, producing a metric thread on an imperial lathe which is pretty standard stuff really so see if you want to watch the next video and subscribe and like if you like the video and i'd certainly appreciate that thank you very much